Category 5 Technology TV is back and on the air. Now, even though we are broadcasting in a socially distant way, which is kind of unexpected, at least I have my favorite co-host here with me. <laughs> hey, Robbie. Hey, man. You good? Yeah. No, keeping safe and just kind of social distancing. <laughs> yeah. Not losing my sanity at all. <laughs> awesome. Well, as you said, the show's a bit different this time around because I'm the only friend you're allowed to hang out with. But between you and me and our friends on Zoom, I think we can pull this off. Well, let's see. Welcome back, Robbie. Oh, thanks. Same to you. Recordings are trusted only to solid-state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's so great to have you joining us for Category 5 Technology TV. Just feels like it's been forever, doesn't it? I'm here at Studio E, and we're safe and sound, thanks to all of our supporters on our Kickstarter campaign and those who have contributed by other means as well. Um, however, due to the unexpected, of course, uh, we had to call off construction and, and kind of makeshift things as best we can in order to be able to come and, uh, and bring you a show uh, our first time here at Studio E, but I've got a, I mean, they got the painting done, so that's, <laughs> that's something. And, uh, you know what? Here we are, and it is so great to see you. I'm so pleased to have you here. Let's get right into our interviews, folks. We've got a great show for you tonight. Thing is, none of us could have anticipated the impact of COVID 19 on a global scale. Uh, we've all had our lives flipped upside down in the past month, and here to share their experiences are Bo Lucknowski. Hey, Robbie, how are you? All things considered, I'm doing well. Thanks, Bo. Bo is the owner, the founder of Ameridroid. They're one of the world's most well-respected vendors of single board computers and other maker tech. Yep. So... so this is where I'm sitting. Yeah. Just in the middle of the inventory area. Cool. My next guest is community ambassador and co producer of Seth McFarland's The Orville, Tom Costantino. How's it going? Hanging in, my friend. Along with Tom, I'm also thrilled to have visual effects supervisor on The Orville, Brandon Fayette, joining us. Thanks for having us. Next in line is our very own world-famous co-host on Category 5 Technology TV, adored by all, it's Sasha Rickman. Hello. And finally, cosplay engineer, woman who can start her Tesla by waving her hand, and most recently, a contestant on Fox's new TV series, Lego Masters with Will Arnett. It's Amy Double D. Hello, Robbie. Hi, Amy. Great to see you again. Now, since I work in IT and we're considered essential, I still have to go to work every single day. But like you, I've been very careful to practice social distancing. And for the most part, I'm interacting with nobody but my immediate family, except if I'm separated by a couple of meters or more. My wife and three kids are at home, and I'm actually kind of feeling a bit envious of those dads who are able to stay home with their families right now. Just going to be honest. But I know it's not easy for folks. Um, we all have our own challenges. Sasha, um, you and your husband, Dave, are you guys hanging in? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah good, good. we are all of the above uh, doing what it takes, you know, staying isolated mm -hmm. and, you know, just keeping ourselves entertained and prepping for the move. <laughs> we're, we're good. Bo, how are you doing? You and your family healthy and safe? Oh, yeah, we're all healthy. Good. There, there's a theory that we in California have already all had it. Amy, how have things been for you? 
quarantine life, uh, transition to working from home. Yeah. Um, I work from home most of the time and I'm home on the weekend. So not too much of that has changed for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I do feel like I'm living in a fishbowl. <laughs> it's like a wake up in the morning, work out, and then I'm like, well, I could go outside today, but I don't need to. So it's, it's yeah. an interesting um, mind. It's more of the mind, at least for me, because I'm very much home all the time. Um, so it's just been a very different, I guess, stay away from the news. How is it that Lego Masters was able to air during the pandemic? Uh, so Lego Masters, we filmed from October to December. So we had wrapped filming in December, oh, okay. and then the premiere date was in February. Yeah. And then I guess the last episode was just this week. Right. So it's been interesting doing interviews because everything now has been digital interviews. <laughs> Um, okay. and I had to do an interview for the Dallas morning news. They're not allowed to come in my house. So it's like one of those where I just had to open the front door and they had to take my picture standing outside <laughs> and it's like, yeah, oh, this is, this is my life now. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of mind blowing how things have changed in just a month. Um, thinking of, I mean, at the start of March, I announced to viewers that we were going to be moving our studio at the end of the month. But by the time that we got things rolling on lease arrangements and the insurance that I need for a new place, COVID-19 was in full swing. Um, so our insurance brokerage closed, uh, the property manager's office. I wasn't sure if I could get a hold of them. Uh, I was actually, honestly, I was getting worried that, um, you know, perhaps I wouldn't be able to rent a truck for the move or even secure a unit in time. Um, but I absolutely had to be out of our old space by April 1st. Um, I think it's fair to say that most, if not all of us, were caught off guard. Um, let's start with Brandon. Um, where were you and the team at the Orville? Uh, as, like, where were you at as far as production goes? I know you were working on season three when all this went down. Sure. I mean, I, we, had, we had filmed uh, a good portion of the first uh, chunk of episodes of the season mm -hmm. and, you know, the way we typically work is our previous team for visual effects is kind of a couple. So, you know, did we, we haven't released how many episodes we're doing this season publicly, have we, Tom? No, we have. It's 11 so far okay. for today. Yeah. Other so we ones. we had things all the way up to episode five and some of some like one off scenes shot. And, you know, we're in previews right now in episode 10. So, uh, you know, I mean, we were. We were in a pretty good swing footage wise, I think, when this struck. Good, good. And uh, you know, now we're working from home trying to complete kind of the pre visualization of all of the effect scenes and then move into mm -hmm. doing the uh, editorial for what we have in the can, trying to kind of just get shots ready, get stuff delivered to our VFX vendors so we can start actually creating, you know, the path towards final, you know, visual effects, which wow. mm -hmm. this time is kind of letting us do, which is pretty good. Yeah, we're just trying to get as much work done as we can um because you know it could be a long cold summer were you guys ready for this like um how much time did you have to transition from the fox lot to home-based editing we had about a day on my end to kind of prep we knew that we were going to shut down on a friday so we kind of synced up as you know many drives as we could you know we have to do everything through the uh, disney security standards so we had to kind of mm. go through making sure everything right, was right you know appropriately kind of locked down, you know, everybody's yeah. place, you know, as much as you can do in the midst of a crisis. But we, we managed to do pretty good. I was going to give kudos to my wife. She was a little ahead of the curve because she knew this was coming. So mm -hmm. we were, uh, I was able to secure, well, I mean, ask forgiveness for with content security <laughs> to get some footage going. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, were we, were we ready to go from zero, 100 to zero? I mean, no, no, I don't think anybody was. I mean, I think we had a week ramp up time to try to get everything kind of moving. And then once we were up and running, it was, you know, production virtually is a little bit stilted, but we're moving at a pretty good clip now. I think we've kind of gotten into swing things. Cool. Sasha, how about you? Um, as a personal support worker, uh, you care for elder, elderly folks. And uh, I, I imagine that this would be a very difficult time. Um, what throughout this entire the pandemic, what has caught you off guard? I was used to the assumption that the clients I saw would be my biggest risk. You know, there's always risk of injury, like back injuries, slips and falls. As right. soon as the pandemic hit, 
it was the realization that I, as an outsider coming into people's homes, now I was the risk to them. Uh, that was that was the biggest thing that caught me off guard was the <laughs> fact that all of a sudden I felt like at any point in any interaction with any one person, I could unknowingly be getting them sick. And so I, I mean, I already am a very careful person, but I went into like overdrive. And if there is a rule to be followed, I am following it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the thing. That was the biggest thing that really hit me with the pandemic, I would say. Bo, what about you guys? Uh, what were you in the midst of at Ameridroid? Uh, we were in the process of scheduling appointments to go visit uh, clients in the California Bay Area, okay, the Silicon Valley and San Francisco area, mm -hmm. and we had to put that on hold, obviously, for <laughs> for social distancing reasons. And with Ameridroid being a tech company, do you feel that that kind of better prepared you to suddenly have to move staff to a home-based work scenario? Well, we are uh, very much a paperless operation. Mm -hmm. We uh, almost all of our stuff is already done digitally. Good, good. Um, we have uh, network staff, so we do things like um, VPNs and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff to get into the business anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, remote desktop and and uh, virtual machines and stuff like that. So it hasn't really changed a whole lot for us because we were already kind of prepared to do this. Right, right. And okay. uh, we do a lot of work on... You know, instead of on paper, we do it on tablets and on, on the screen. Amy, how about you? How have your plans been impacted? Yeah, so I was supposed to go to a, a, a hacker event in Serbia, and oh, uh, we wow. were planning to fly into Budapest and then take the train down to Serbia and have like a, a hacker thing on the train with some friends. Mm -hmm. So that is um, postponed with no, like, no date. Uh, I go to DEF CON in August. I go to Dragon Con, which is also in August. And... Uh, that may seem it's like enough time ways away, but it's, I mean, it's really not. I don't foresee like too many, even if they do reinstate it, how many people are going to be going to these things because right. fear is a very strong motivator yeah. for a lot of people. And uh, the fear of the unknown and the, the internet is this epitome of misinformation. Mm -hmm. Um so it's, are you going to be going to an event? And if you are now, people aren't going to be hugging or the interactions are not going to be the same or how people spend money in the future is going to be very different. Mm -hmm. I, I think this will be an interesting wake up call for some of the younger generations that haven't saved, you know, their six months of savings or their a thousand dollar emergency funds or however they handle like the financial crisis situation. And that just adds to like another stress level. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's interesting because it's how can how can we give back when we can't even like some people can't even help themselves or you feel you can't help like with interaction. And I will say like working on some side projects or just building things. Sometimes I, I feel guilty about sharing like stuff I'm making or working on. I feel guilty for being happy. Um, we actually had a hangout call the other day with a bunch of people from the Lego Masters and we all just like had a hangout call and we were just like building we had we, there's not, nothing planned to build but everyone we were just building with something with lego and all just hanging out on a live call and mm -hmm. it was it just felt that that felt normal um to be doing something that you're already familiar with yeah so change is hard right so um it's you're out of your comfort zone for a lot of most a lot of people are out of their comfort zone for that but yeah I guess we've got an infinite supply of Lego for now. <laughs> <laughs> Comes with the territory, I guess. Now, while I was really fortunate to have some friends help out with the move itself, for me, it's been really tough juggling the studio move and setting things up and being ready to broadcast tonight uh, since social distancing says that I can't have anyone else here to help me out. Um, we also had to postpone the construction, um, so I don't have a stage or even a desk in front of me. Um, I've had to drill a hole through the studio wall as a temporary way to get the signal from the camera into the production room, which is actually a separate room. So I, I think, you know, while my scenario is not terrible, uh, we're all having to kind of figure out innovative ways to keep doing what we do. 
Uh, I'll start with Tom. What about you? Um, what's it been like to have to move to a home-based production studio? I hate not seeing everyone and also trying to work with the boss from, you know, we're, you know, seven miles away from each other and it's, you know, presents some technical challenges. And um, yeah, I mean, Brandon can answer too. It's, you know, I mean, luckily we do a lot of stuff on computers and Mm -hmm. we're we're all pretty good about, uh, you know, keeping up with each other, but you know, this nothing replaces all of us being in a, in an office together. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss I miss seeing I miss seeing everybody's faces for sure. But you know, we lucked out that we live in an area of the country that has fast enough internet that we can do remote workstation and yeah, you know, true. quite a few other you know little tricks to kind of make sure that we can keep moving forward and mm-hmm. feel at least kind of like we're in the office, even though we don't really see each other except over camera like this. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely working. <laughs> it's good. I mean, it won't be forever. We're you know, we're going to run out of work. I mean, VFX can go a little longer if we can work that out financially. But, you know, we're now we're going we're gonna to run the pipeline until we run out of material. Once we have, you know, all of the edits delivered by you guys, I mean, we've got a lot of work. The show's really visual effects heavy. So, I mean, we've got thousands of shots already that we can start kind of putting into production just with what you guys have done for the past few weeks. So, you know, that has to get sculpted, animated, you know, ingested into vendor systems, you know, and then we start bringing it to life shot by shot. So it's, we've got a, we got a lot to do, fortunately. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Um, Tom, you, uh, you also said that um, you'll eventually run out of work. Um, I can only hope that by the time you get to that point, we're going to be through this. Uh, but I guess some viewers and certainly myself are wondering right now, do you have any projections at this point as to, you know, when the uh, third season of the Orville is going to be available? Um, I, I'm not at liberty to say, cause I don't know. I, 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 I think this is going to affect all production. We will all be in the same boat. Mm. Um, so uh, without, without quoting me, and I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't see how all of television and film isn't delayed by this. Um, you know, what people aren't realizing is we have to now figure out how you go back and put 100 to 200 people in a wood box and film together when right. there's, you know, when we don't have a vaccine or a treatment yet. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we got some plannings to do. Yeah, we, sure do. we mean the higher ups than us. Right, right. Mm-hmm. That's not honest answer. Yeah. Sasha, how, how have you and Dave been impacted? So with the pandemic happening, we made the very important decision to be closer to Dave's dad sooner rather than later. Um, and we moved up our move, our move to Newfoundland by a few months. Um, and so mm-hmm. we're packing up and leaving and going in the midst of a pandemic, right. which is an interesting kind of, it's a challenge because you, we have to abide by social isolation and physical distancing, even mm-hmm. during, you know, a very big, like multi-day move where we have to take into account the fact that we can't go anywhere for food, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. When we get to the, um, when we get to the house, we get home, we're not allowed off the property for 14 days. It's, it's legally, you know, mandated quarantine, which we happily will abide by, Mm -hmm. but it does mean that we've had to make, um, make arrangements that there's going to be food there for us, (laughs) you know, that, you know, that sort of thing that you don't even, you would never think that free movement in your own country would be something that you would have to really think about. Bo, how have you been impacted at Ameridroid? There, there are people that are working from home now. Most most people mm-hmm. here are working from home at the moment. Okay. Um, but our shipping staff is still coming in, and, and they're still shipping. Yeah. And everybody's doing the social distancing thing. Good. good. We have a fair amount of room here, so it's easy to keep keep our distance. Mm-hmm. But um, in our in our county right now, there's only one confirmed case, and it's a uh, somebody who's on parole, so or on probation, I guess. And so, 
they're under house arrest right now anyway so <laughs> just like the rest of us Bo. amy how about you mm. So I have pretty much a full makerspace shop in my house. So that hasn't changed too much. I have the access to 3D printers, laser cutter. I have a five axis CNC machine. I oh, have cool. like, I have all the tools to do stuff here. Yeah, yeah. Um, at this point, I think it's just, as I always say, I have this little, this little Lego thing. It says head case. All right. <laughs> because at some point I'm always worried about time for finishing a project or for a certain event or a certain con. And now it's like, I have this abundance of time. What can I be doing with this extra mm. time? I'm now, I'm not commuting an hour to work and an hour from work. Right. And I mean, reality is everyone has the same hours in the day as everyone else. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people are, what's the motivation to get out of bed in the morning? Um, mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. me, I've been making myself work out every day. So when people are stumbling out of bed when it's still dark outside, I've already I've already worked out for the day. I've already tried to make the best of it. That's a good idea. How do you stick to it? I am I am you make a habit, you make a discipline. You dis and discipline not as in a punishment, and discipline as in you can do this, you're you know, you're worth it. So every day, so I think today is like my twenty fourth day that I've worked out or something, but like like the fifth day, I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> um, but that discipline has like, I'm like, come change so much of just how my day has been. I'm like, mm. all right, I'm waking up at the same time every morning, even on the weekend when I don't have to work, because if not, then I just get in this slump and I'm like, now I'm just watching useless stuff on TV, Netflix, something that is not <laughs> furthering or pushing myself. Like, I could stay home anytime and watch Netflix. Like why? Um, not that I still, I got some Netflix shows I like, so <laughs> but no, no judgment on that. Um, it's, I think it's going to change to the future of any like companies or places that say, Hey, you can't work from home. And now all these yeah. companies in these roles are positioned to that. Right. Um, also all the wonderful parents that are also learning how to balance homeschooling and, uh, and working lessons. Yeah, I, I think it's been a different challenge for each of us. You know, I, I think like, I'm trying to think how many days it's been. My biggest challenge is um, my dad is older. So mm -hmm. trying to not, you know, like if I have to be around him or, you know, go get his groceries, like yeah. not being able to give those people a hug has been like yeah. hard for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Also, like not the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown is probably one of the hardest things is I'm, I'm planning to go to these two conferences at the end of the year. So I'm trying to plan to work on these projects and have these things finished on time. So now where's the motivation to finish those? Why should I finish those? Um, and that's the next steps. Like, okay, what if this is the new norm now? Now we're not going to be having these events. Am I making my projects for myself or other people? Am I making it like, it's kind of, sorry. <laughs> Puppy's thirsty. Indiana Jones. My bad. <laughs> no worries. Um, you were saying that uh, you were considering whether uh, you were making your projects for yourself or for others. Yeah, but it's kind of made me think it's like, why do we do the things that we do? Do we do them for acceptance of other people? Or are we doing them for us? Or are we doing them to learn? And I think I've kind of been honing on like improving some projects I've already worked on. And I was like, so I'm not going to go back and work on that. It's fine. And, you know, when <laughs> fine is just not okay. So I've been going back and kind of improving on some of those. And I have the time to do it. So that's right. been, a, yeah. I guess, an interesting balance. Yeah, that's good. Sasha, um, what's been the hardest for you? I think the uncertainty day to day, the fact waking up, not, not knowing what's happening the next day, um, has been difficult. And, um, I would say for me personally, my biggest challenge has been, I have a tendency to lean towards like the bright side of everything, as you mm -hmm. may know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and although, I mean, it's so good to see all of, all of the humanitarian efforts and all of the good that's coming out of this pandemic, there's a real sad side of it. And for me, it's coming to terms with like 
the actual fact of the tragedy. And um, it's been a very big challenge for me to balance that, mm. I think, because I, I have found myself, you know, being one of maybe many who end up glued to the TV and they're watching stats and they're watching, you know, it's, it's real lives being affected. Yeah. But at some point I had to teach myself, okay, I need to turn it off and just tune in, you know, to something, <laughs> something good, light <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's been our biggest challenge is just learning to filter through when it's appropriate to be a part of the, the news and when it's not. <laughs> Amy, how about you? I had my grandmother died um, last oh, like two weeks ago. I'm so, so sorry. Like, that I never thought I would be asking like to do a private live streaming of a funeral. Hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we live in weird times and, you know, so a lot of family members couldn't be there for the funeral. And yeah. I was trying oh, to my. put it in a way to my dad as it's not as a disrespectful thing to do this for your mother our grandmother. Um, my brother put it as a good point. He said, um, we have these amazing technology tools to connect us. So even if we can't physically be there, Mm -hmm. like we can be there virtually and people didn't used to have that, that chance or that experience. And though it is uh, bizarre, I guess you would say to live stream a private funeral. I know the people that couldn't be there were very grateful that they could at least I guess, honor or put their respect towards it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely living in a weird time. Yeah. Um, Sasha, besides the move itself, uh, what kind of changes has the pandemic brought about for you? So this is actually really quite the interesting experience almost experiments in the fact that we were between studios and then we were in a pandemic (laughs) and we have to be physically distant because now as a part of the show, in order to maintain, you know, the connections I've made, I am going to turn (laughs) a part of the house into a studio. And so I'll be able to connect remotely just as Mm -hmm. we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it'll be a different time zone, which I understand (laughs) that you get that I'll have to get accustomed to. I think I end up I end up airing an hour and a half later than you. In the future? Ah, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be I'll still be part of the show. I'll just be very physically distant. <laughs> Amy, how have you had to adapt? I have found that I've had to become more resourceful. So for example, I was trying to design some like new circuit board components and uh-huh. I need some parts that I don't have and I have to order. Well, now they're not available or right. you know, they're not, I can't yep. get them. So I'm like, okay, I have to use what I have in my house. I feel like I'm like at this <laughs> like, summer camp of, you know, <laughs> yeah. you have these five things and you have to make this and you have an hour. I feel like I'm back on the Lego master show is what it's like. <laughs> yeah. That's what it, the, the countdown clock is on. But I feel that um, I've started to become more creative and or really understand the parts that I do have or take things apart. But as far as technology, I think having the internet has, the internet connects us. <laughs> but um, I even did like the, the Netflix watch party and I've never done that before where you watch movies with your friends. And I'm like, why, that's weird. I just watch movies by myself anyways. But it was actually really fun because we had six of us in the room and normally when you go to a okay. movie, you're sitting next to the person or you're in the dark, so you don't ever get to see. Mm-hmm. And it was actually probably more fun to watch my friend's facial expressions because some of them had never oh. seen, you know, like some of these like old school movies or Star Wars mm-hmm. or Indiana Jones. And you're just like, wait a minute. <laughs> or when they like, they make the connection. So to watch their facial expressions, like taking someone to Disney World for the first time, it's almost just as fun to like watch them. That's such a fun idea. Now, this is a terrible time for many, and and some of you that are watching at home may have lost a loved one, or some of you are scared or coping with loneliness or worry. Um, I want you to remember that you're not alone through this. Uh, We're all experiencing this differently, but we're all in this together. Tom, your thoughts? 
Uh, you know, I'm going to quote my great grandmother in law, who's, who's no longer with us, but was very wise. And she always would say, This too shall pass. And she's been through like three world wars. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, trying to think about all the, all the myriad of things. I think she was even around for the early part of the Great Depression. So, you know, um, it, it seems bad right now and it's going to be rough, but humans are resilient and, you know, maybe in a year, year and a half, it'll just be that ha-ha funny thing. Well, for the rest of us, lucky to stay healthy. Ha-ha funny thing. We, hey, remember that time we all were stuck in our houses for months on end? Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, you know. Yeah. But I do think the human race is very resilient. I think, you know, like I said, it's almost like buying a house. If you were lucky enough to do so, it's horrible trying to do it. And then, when, then you don't remember any of it except for the house when it's over with. So, yeah. you know. I think, I think we'll all be okay eventually. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I I hear you. Um, it actually reminds me, my wife and I were just going through some old photos uh, from a couple of years back, just uh, this past weekend. Um, we'd taken the kids up to the cottage um, for Canada Day's fireworks. So we sat on the beach of West Guilford, and as the sun went down, we got eaten alive by mosquitoes. It was terrible. But as we looked at the photos, my wife actually remarked, in looking at the pictures, all you see is the good part of the memories. You forget about the insects, the discomfort, and how terrible it was at the time. We made it through, and now all we have is the fond memory. And I'm, I'm really hoping that we're going to see the same in this situation. Sasha, final words? This will pass. We will be okay. And we're with you every step of the way this world is is small we are your neighbors we i mean if anything that um, that this pandemic has shown us is how just even one kind word to another person can really make a difference and yeah i just want to say we're in this together and we are here for you mm-hmm. i am here for you i'll just be here in newfoundland <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Amy, what would you say is important for each of us to keep in mind? I think it's, it's okay to laugh still. And um, I think that's what people are sometimes afraid of right now is like, I feel guilty for having fun. And yeah. fun doesn't have to mean you're irresponsible and you're, you know, you're going outside with like 20 people and you're, right, right. I mean, fun can be like we were, you know, you get together with your friends and you do a live stream and you put together stuff so you can, yeah. you can laugh. So after you can still have some future. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't have, I don't have the right answer for that. And I don't, anyone that says they have the right answer doesn't know themselves. Um, there's too many unknowns, but yeah. support, like you're not alone. Like that, that's the best part. You're, you're not alone but we also have the tools to connect or maybe, you know, someone who can't afford a laptop. Maybe you can, you know, donate for some, you know, people to get laptops or cell phones, something to have someone to help them stay in touch. Cause those are things I, I don't think about. And I know some of the school districts that are teaching, you know, the kids are from home. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, Oh, do they provide laptops for those kids? And, um, I know a lot of the schools don't. So that's, that's also a financial. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, I've been fortunate personally that with all, uh, with all three of my kids at home, um, I've been able to give them each an old computer, but sadly, um, <laughs> and I kind of feel bad about this, but I, honestly, Amy, I never really thought about how others may not have access to, to an old computer, for example. Um, so I think that's a really great idea. Thanks, Amy. Um, Bo, speaking to those who are struggling right now, what would you like them to know? Yeah, that's that's hard. You know, life can be really difficult, um, and we've come through quite a few challenges since the turn of the century, haven't we? With uh, terrorist attacks and the uh, housing crisis in the uh, late two thousand, like two thousand eight, and and um, after that, we had the recession and um and you know just the ongoing 
actions in the Middle East. And I don't know, just there's been a lot of stuff going on in life. Yeah. And, you know, I from a technology standpoint, there's not really a whole lot we can do other than, you know, prepare to work from home to, you know, we raised our children in a homeschool environment. So, so as far, our children are already out of that, past that. So it would not have made much difference for us from a schooling perspective, but I can see how for a lot of people it's, it's making a huge difference. And, um, I'm hoping that it gives people more time with their children, really, um, as they as they prepare to school from home, mm-hmm. and uh, as they work from home as well. Of course, that can be challenging to segment work and school, yeah, or work, true in, enough. you know, work and family life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but as far as people who are suffering, uh, that's. Uh, I wish I had some magic words to say for those people, other than. Um, you know, grow in in your in your uh, faith and you know rely on a higher power because you know we as humans can only do so much. Thanks, Bo. Brandon, some final thoughts. I think right now there are people that are fortunate to be able to work like we are, and you know, for as long as we have that, that's a blessing. And I think for those that are struggling right now, you know. The world has gotten through recessions. The world has gotten through wars. Uh, people yeah. are very good at adapting and picking up and moving forward. There's going to be a light at the end of this tunnel. There, there always is. And then, you know, we as a society and as a planet, you know, can get through things and bounce back even stronger. And I think that there's going to be a lot of positive that comes out of this that uh, we didn't really see before. And uh, I'd say for everybody, you know, Find a thing to keep you happy. Find a new hobby. Spend some time doing something you haven't done before. Find, find one bright thing in a day to, you know, keep you motivated. You know, create something you've never created. You know, it's it's a time to explore things. It's a time to say, you know, hey, for those who have family, you know, this is time you're never going to get again like this. You know, take photos of your kids. Have these memories, you know. They won't remember it, but you will, and you can show them later what this was like. I mean, yeah. this is—it's a milestone event for the world, and I think we need to uh, just recognize that in the midst of all the negative that's surrounding us, there's definitely positives that will come out. Of this. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate those words so very much. From all of us, we wish you, your families, health and comfort throughout this time. Stay safe. We'll be right back. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Time to head into the newsroom. Here's Henry Bailey Brown. Thank you, Robbie. To help with the self-isolation blahs, Google has made its Stadia Pro video game streaming service free for two months. Phil Harrison, the head of Google Stadia, wrote on Google's blog, Video games can be a valuable way to socialize with friends and family when you're stuck at home. So we're giving gamers in 14 countries free access to Stadia for two months. Unlike before where you had to order the Stadia controller and the Chromecast Ultra in order to subscribe, now all you need is a Gmail account, which many of us already have for free. With <laughs> While most games available to stream through Google Stadia need to be bought, the Pro subscription does come with some free ones. The most notable of these are Destiny 2, Grid, SteamWorld Quest, Hand of Gilgamesh, and Thumper. Stadia Pro is normally a $10 monthly subscription. Those already subscribed simply won't get billed for the next two months. While people signing up for the first time will get all the benefits of Pro, and will be switched to a free account after two months. Pro benefits include access to the free game library and the ability to stream them at a higher quality than just 1080p and 60 frames per second. During this period, however, Google will be adjusting their bandwidth usage to cope with the influx of new users and the increase of people streaming stuff online in general. 
like we're all at home these days, right? So as a result, the default will be 1080p instead of the 4K. However, you can switch that in settings for now. If you're new to Stadia, go to stadia.com to sign up, download the Stadia app on Android or iOS, and then you can play on your laptop, desktop, Chrome OS tablet with your favorite controller or mouse and keyboard. Again, just some personal thoughts on this story. It's a very interesting time to be a gamer for sure. Again, Stadia Pro has had its positives as well as negatives, such as the idea that uh, people aren't too happy with having to buy their games again to play in a cloud platform. With that being said, there's other alternatives available if you don't want to get into Stadia and Google, such as uh, the Xbox Game Pass, how again, you have a huge library of games that you buy that are very often cross-platform. So you can play these games on your Xbox as well as on your PC, etc., with a single account, your Xbox account. Or you can even do uh, the other service that I personally prefer, the NVIDIA GeForce Now, um, where basically uh, you're using uh, NVIDIA servers to play your games. However, it's actually a free service. Um, you can play up to an hour for free, or you can play up to, I believe, six or eight hours uh, paying around $10 a month Canadian. Um, but basically what this service entails is that you don't have to buy your games a second time. Uh, you basically just log in to Steam, My Games, or even free games such as War Thunder, World of Warships, World of Tanks, whatever, and you can actually play your games that you already own on this free service. Well, if you play only for an hour. Uh, but again, I've, I've used it, I'm very happy with it, and again, you don't have to buy your games twice, which is the big factor with Stadia. Will Stadia prove worthy? Let's decide. You can now play for two months. What a great time to be able to uh, get into streaming your games. Thanks, Henry. And for our next story, here's Jeff Weston. The CEO of Cambridge Qualcomm Computing called Honeywell's efforts the best kept secret in quantum computing. In a race where most of the major players are vying for attention, Honeywell has quietly worked on its efforts for the last few years and under strict NDA, it seems. But early last month, the company announced a major breakthrough that it claims will allow it to launch the world's most powerful quantum computer this year. Honeywell has long built the kind of complex control systems that power many of the world's largest industrial sites. It's that kind of experience that has now allowed it to build an advanced ion trap at the core of its efforts. Computers use bits to transfer information. The more bits, the more data that can be transferred. Think of the leap from Super Nintendo at 16 bits to the Nintendo 64 at 64 bits. Quantum information is transferred in qubits, which have the same purpose as a traditional computer bits, but are radically more powerful. These qubits can eventually form quantum gates, which can lead to quantum circuits. That's the measure Google was using. Honeywell, however, is measuring what IBM first called quantum volume, which looks at a quantum machine more holistically, taking into account the number of qubits, connectivity, and gate and measurement errors. The larger the quantum volume, the more complex problems you can solve, says Dr. Patty Lee, chief scientist for Honeywell. IBM owns machines. IBM's own machines have achieved a quantum volume of 32. Honeywell's machines uh, achieves twice that. Currently, Honeywell has about 100 scientists, engineers, and developers dedicated to its quantum project. Original projections might have seen Honeywell's quantum computer unveiled this summer. We'll see how long that shapes up in light of COVID-19. Thanks, Jeff. We do have to take a quick break. The Crypto Corner and more of this week's top tech stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Crypto Corner. Yes, I missed you too. It's been some time. And as you can see, I'm working from home, as probably most of us. Um, we're running through deep crisis on a global level. And if you're working in the travel industry or tourism industry, um, then life is not easy. And as there is always, when there is a difficulty, there's always also an opportunity. And I see the opportunity very clear here in my industry, which is the cryptocurrency industry or blockchain uh, technology. There was even a research done by LinkedIn that came out with a result that companies uh, are in desperate need of blockchain developers. And that's what I want to focus on today. I want to focus on, on a positive note. <clears throat> and so uh, who's currently hiring um, blockchain developers? 
or blockchain uh, people that, that ha are in knowledge of blockchain technologies? Well, first, of course, startups. Uh, there are a lot of startups that have got brilliant ideas, they have got money, and they're in desperate look of, of uh, good people. Then large companies, because they know that I have to uh, move into blockchain technologies, tech firms, as always, and governments. So those are the four big sectors that are currently looking for uh, blockchain um, uh, people. And what are they looking for? Well, of course, the usual subjects, marketing, which includes public relations and communication and social networking and so on. Uh, trade and sales uh, is, a, is a big one. Support, uh, help desk and so on. Legal compliance and my favorite is development. And that's what I want to focus on. We are a uh, technology channel. And so that's why I would like to focus more on development. So if you don't know anything about programming, don't worry about it. This, this is your moment here. And so what you'll see behind me <clears throat> is a step-by-step -step idea on how you can get into this market, how you can find a job in this industry. And so the first step, if you don't know anything about a programming language, is learn a programming language. Now, it's not difficult. Within a day, you know the basics. It's really easy to do that. It's all about logic. If you can think in a logical way, then learning a programming language is something very easy. And I would start with JavaScript. And they're all, by the way, very similar. So there's no big differences uh, between one language and the other. I would start with JavaScript because you can develop something that is easily uh, visible um, on, on a screen or so. And then um, if, if you know JavaScript, I would go over into Python because that's what a lot of uh, crypto uh, companies or uh, platforms are using. There's a, lot, there's a lot of help, free help on YouTube, for example. Um, just Google uh, JavaScript courses and you'll find a multitude of them. And you'll see by the reviews if there are serious ones or not. There's also professional organizations like Coursera or EDX that offer from universities like Harvard or, or, or similar uh, courses on programming. Just run through a few of them, learn as much as you can. As I said, the basics, you, have, you know them within one day. Once you've got that knowledge, I would focus on blockchain. So let's take Ethereum, which is the one that most people are using and searching for. Uh, learn about Ethereum. How is Ethereum working? Look under the hood. Yeah, learn uh, uh, how they're currently doing the proof of work, uh, what is a smart contract, all those things so that you, that you can have a decent discussion with somebody and you know more or less what Ethereum, how the Ethereum platform works. Once that's done, <clears throat> then of course you have to dive deep into uh, Ethereum programming. So Solidity and so on. Or oh, in future it will be Viper. And that is something that can also be learned very fast. There are also specialist courses uh, that offer this year, uh, like udemy.com and, and uh, BitDegree. They offer courses. Uh, you also see the, the, the reviews of people, what they think of those courses. You can just, I mean, they're not free, but they're cheap. 20 bucks, 50 bucks, it, it, it's not a big deal. Uh, but my favorite one is Ivan on tech because he's been like the technical guru in this industry on, on a lower level. And his courses are really fantastic because he's offers, uh, he offers everything from the start. So if you've got, don't have much knowledge, just take his courses and you'll get uh, very fast to a level where you do know what it is about. After about two months in this uh, uh, programming environment, I can guarantee you know 99% more than most of the people. Yeah, so it's a lot of superficial talk that you hear about this crypto industry, but because it's a very young industry, um, there is uh, not much knowledge out there, and and you don't want to become a Bitcoin developer anyway, which is tough. Uh, you want to just find a job, then two months work uh, should do the job. Um, now, of course, I I put also up a list of where to find a job. So there are several websites that, um, that offer already now uh, a job search. Uh, I would visit them and just, uh, I mean, the, you've got the usual ones and every country works different. The list that I have got here is of course more America, US focused, but every country has got their own uh, uh, list of developers that they're using. 
So that's for me um, today. So it's very positive in the sense that if you uh, know, if you want to go into this blockchain industry, if you know about um, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, the, the future is bright. I mean, it's, it's literally like that. I wish you good luck. If you've got any questions, then just contact us and um, we'll see on how we can help you. Anyway, that's for me. So back to the studio. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Robert. Just a reminder, we're not giving away financial advice here on the Category 5.TV newsroom, but instead just trying to give you some information and leaving it up to you to make the decision. Henry, next story. GitHub announced last week that all of its core features are now available for free to all users. That means unlimited private repositories with unlimited collaborations for all, including teams that use the service for commercial projects, as well as up to 2,000 minutes per month of free access to GitHub Actions, the company's automation and CI-CD platform. Teams that want more advanced features, like code owners or enterprise features, like SAML support, will still have to upgrade to a paid plan at this time, but the pricing for those plans has been slashed in half. The company has always taken a freemium approach to its pricing model, but since its acquisition by Microsoft, it started to expand the number of features in its free accounts. GitHub CEO Nat Friedman stressed that this move had been long on the roadmap, and it isn't a limited promotion motivated by the current COVID-19 crisis. He says, this is something we plan to do and have wanted to do for a long time, since we essentially did the acquisition, and now getting to this point to do it took until now, until it became a high priority. Thanks, Henry. Jeff, what is going on with SETI at home? Astronomers say they have all the data they need in the search for extraterrestrial life. Distributed computer network SETI at Home has ceased scouring radio telescope data for signs of extraterrestrials after 20 years. Much like Folding at Home, which is currently acting as the world's most powerful supercomputer in the fight against the new coronavirus, SETI at Home utilized a vast user-donated network of computers to analyze data, but is now heading into hibernation. SETI at Home has been in operation since 1999. During that time, it has processed heaps of radio telescope data collected from the deepest depths of space and listened into narrow band radio signals in order to track down anything out of the ordinary. To do so, it relied upon the contributions of computers from across the globe, graphics cards, and powerful CPUs in tow, all working together in order to learn of life beyond Earth. But don't you worry, it's not shutting down due to lack of interest. In fact, the researchers based out of USC Berkeley are inundated with the data. But with no need for further data, the team of astronomers will instead focus their efforts on back-end analysis for later publication in a scientific journal. The project's message boards will remain operational, but there's no longer any need to task your gaming rig with the search for extraterrestrials. SETI at home may one day return. Researchers are eyeing up, potentially, uh, eyeing up potential use cases and will distribute tasks in cosmology in Pulsar research, research sometime in the future. Nothing is set in stone, however, so it's better to put your gaming PC to good use researching elsewhere than leaving it idling. The SETI at Home team recommends lending your help to Folding at Home. It's a critical task of simulating the COVID-19 virus. That project is currently operating at 1.5 exaflops of computing power kindly donated from across the globe. That's a whole frontier supercomputer's worth for scale. That sounds like a great use for our GPU. Hey, big thanks to BP9 this week, as well as our community of viewers for submitting stories. Thank you for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. And don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, well, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash newsroom. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Robbie Ferguson. Well, there you
there you have it. Studio E is up and running. Category 5 Technology TV is on the air. It's been great having you here. Hey, thank you so much for your support of Category 5 Technology TV. I couldn't have done this without you. It's great to be back, and I'm looking forward to everything that's going to come out of this space here at Category 5's new studio. Hey, don't forget to check out our website, Category5.tv. If you're looking for something to binge, well, this show has been on the air for 13 years. And incidentally, every single episode is available for you absolutely free. Check it out, Category5.tv. I'm already looking forward to next week. I'll be here again on, uh, well, the same time right here at Category 5 Technology TV. If you can't wait that long, of course, get on our website and join us for a Category 5 community coffee break. At this time, it happens every single day, so I will see you as soon as tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and stay safe. I'll see you next week.